So today I've got this Toshiba TV. It's a LED LCD set. And when I hit the power button, all I get is just a very quick flash of the Toshiba logo. So let's see if it'll do it real quick. There we go. That's all you see is just the Toshiba logo. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna check here is the power supply and this connector P804 as well as the connector next to it P803 are for the LED driver of the set. Now this because it's a smaller set it's only about a 42 inch it only has one LED driver I'll show that to you here in just a minute but the set is off right now and according to the legend pins 1 through 5 are 24 volt LED 6 through 10 is ground 11 is no connection Pin 12 is backlight on. That's going to be a very crucial uh, pin. And pin 14 is dim. So what I'm going to do is put my probe on pin number 1. I can see it's got 1.4 volts and dropping. And I'm going to hit the power button here, the manual power button. And it goes right up to 24 volts. So that is good. So let's take a look now at pin 12 and this is the backlight on command so let me go ahead and shut the set back off and it goes to zero now I'm going to return the set on and make sure that it comes up and stays up it doesn't go to five and then come down to three it looks like it comes right up to about three and a half volts just for the heck of it let's do it one more time I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to put my meter on the min max scale and I'm going to put it on 6 volts. So this is on max right now. There it is. It came up to 0 0.3 volts right off the bat. And it went to 3.2, 3.25, and then 3.26. So let's look at the actual voltage here. The actual voltage is 3.26, so it stayed at the highest point. So that tells me the main board's good. I would imagine, I haven't done this yet, but if you took a flashlight, a very bright LED flashlight, and held it right up to the panel, you could probably see video. So I'm gonna say it's our LED driver that's having the problem. So let's look at that. Okay, so here is the LED driver board with my meter in the way, of course. So let me put my meter here real quick. Let's just talk about this. Here's the uh, power coming in from the power supply that I previously measured. This connector right here, it's a four pin connector. And this sends the 3D command to and from the timing controller board to pulse the LEDs on and off when it's in the 3D mode. This connector right up here on the top is the LEDs to the panel itself. And that's what we're going to be concerned with. Now the first thing I'm going to look at, there's two tabs here, two test points lab labeled V out. So I've got my meter in the 600 volt range. Once again, I'm going to put it on min max because it's not going to last long. And let's look and see what the voltage is. 10 volts right when I start the set. Don't let that fool you though. Once the LEDs actually start, it's going to go up much higher. It goes up to 100 volts and then it goes immediately down. I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you look in this little hole right here, you can actually see the LED light just ever so momentarily. So let's clear out the min-max one more time. And we're going to test these four test points right here, which are the LED return from the panel to measure their voltages. So I just turned the set back on. It takes about three, three to five seconds. There we go, 9.3 volts. So that's going to be our benchmark to see if the other ones are off from that voltage or not. So we'll turn it right back on. Uh, 26.6 volts. So either the first one or the second one is the one having a problem. Luckily, I've got two other voltages to measure here so we can make a determination on what's going on. So now I'm on the third test point. 
9.1. So let's reset this, turn the set off. Go on test point number four, way over here on the side. Put it back on min-max. Turn the set back on. Now we got 12.5. So 9 to 12 isn't that much, but 26 volts is quite a difference. So either we have a bad LED or we have a bad LED driver. Okay, so what I'm going to do to make a determination, since I've got four leads here and they do the exact same thing, is I'm going to reverse the first and the second leads. by simply lifting up this little tab and at the same time very hard to do this while watching a camera pulling the cable out there's the first one lift up that tab oops I didn't get it in time it went back pull the second one out so I'm going to swap them right now so now pin 1 is pin 2. Well, I don't know the exact pin numbers, but I'm reversing these two. There we go. Okay, so I've got the set. I've got the camera on the other side, so it'll look upside down from what I just showed you. But nevertheless, I've got my meter still on the 600 volt range. I'm going to put it back in min-max. And I'm going to turn this unit on, and I'm on pin 1 now, which used to be pin 2. Okay, the set's on now. And I still get 25 volts on that pin, and our last time it was on this pin, so it's definitely not the LED driver board. Let's just verify it. I'm going to shut it off, clear my min-max, turn the set back on. Now remember last time this was about 9 volts, so if I see 9 volts then I know my LED driver board is fine because I've swapped these two uh, LEDs. Now 11 volts, that's close enough. I'm not going to nitpick at that. So let's take the LCD panel apart and look inside it. Just for uh, FYI, I'm going to swap those two leads back right now. Now to prevent any damage, make sure that you've removed both the speakers. I've already done so. They're mounted down here. Make sure you remove these two brackets. They do have screws that go into the front plastic and it goes on top of the timing controller cover. Make sure you remove the timing control cover as well. Make sure that you remove these two circuit boards. One's going to be the LED and a remote control receiver and the other one's going to be the infrared for the 3D system. All right, so I've got the set right side up now. Well, it's laying on its back. And now to remove the frame, it's just a matter of there's little plastic tabs all over the back of it. You just release the tabs and the frame will come off. Now that I've got all the little plastic snaps loose, the whole frame can just be lifted off and completely away from the TV. Now I'm back to the bottom of the TV again. I need to take all these brackets off. Make sure you disconnect the leads from the timing controller board because the panel is going to come separated from the back of the set. These brackets up on top need to be removed as well. Okay, so real quick, I've got the, uh, all the covers off, all the uh, brackets off. To release the, uh, the uh, timing controller cables from the LCD panel, these two connectors just reach in there with a small screwdriver or a fingernail and just lift it up. And then uh, to remove the uh, circuit board itself you just kind of tip it back in this bracket and move it forward once that happens the cable will just slip out uh, if you wanted to you could tip up the other end here and it has these little tabs you can kind of grab them and you can just pull the cables out of course they taped it down which doesn't make life really super easy but they'll just come right out of there they only go back in one way make sure you don't put them in upside down or backwards I'm just going to tape them there to keep them safe you will need to remove both of these so they can uh, flop freely as well as you will want to go around and remove all the screws that hold the front frame into place. There are multiple screws around the outside of the panel 
as well as on the sides of the panel there are snaps, metal snaps you have to remove. So I'm going to flip the set back onto its back right now. Okay, so I've got the all the screws out from all the way around the panel. The set's laying absolutely flat right now, so if I lift it up there's the back of the set on my cart. And so now I've got to release these little catches. There's one there. There's a couple more right here. Each one has to be released in order for the screen frame to let go. Uh, I don't know if there's more on the front or not. It doesn't look like it. It looks like they're just here on the sides. Oh no, there are some on the top and the bottom as well. So here's looking from a different view. Got to release that one. And there's going to be a couple more here, plus the ones on the other side as well. Just like with the screen frame, once you've got, or just like with the front of the set, once you've got this loose, the whole metal bracket can be picked up and taken out of the way. Okay, so next I've got the screen frame off completely. I want to go and just barely lift up with my fingernail and very ever so carefully lift up the LCD panel. If you feel anything that's pulling, be very gentle and wait. Sometimes the adhesive sticks to the panel. I'm going to stick my hand underneath right in the middle of it and I'm going to kind of just very gently lift it up. You can see how it actually bows. I don't know if you can see it or not, but they are somewhat flexible. So I'm just going to take the whole LCD panel with the, time, with the driver boards attached to the bottom of it here and very carefully set it over here on this other cart. Alright, so now that I've got the LCD panel out of the way, I need to remove let me move the camera a little bit. Need to remove the diffuser plates. And once again, we've got these plastic snaps. We need to kind of, whoops, that one just broke off. We need to kind of release them gentlier than that. And once you get them all released all the way around, the diffuser sheets should theoretically, there we go, they should just lift up out of the way. Okay, so I've got all the little plastic tabs loose, so I should be able to just lift the whole diffuser plate and sheets off completely. And I'm going to take those and set them aside. Now the main diffuser, hopefully it's not held in with any more plastic snaps. It's just a sheet of plastic with a sheet of plastic behind it. Lots of sheets of plastic here. You just gotta make sure they all go back in approximately the same direction they came out. Okay, I've got the uh, diffusers off completely. Here are the LEDs over here on the side. You can see each individual LED. Here's the cable that attaches it. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. So let's go ahead and turn this on real quick. And just keep an eye on the LEDs as they power up. I've done this once already, looking, there we go, that one LED right there was out. Let's go ahead and shut it off. We'll turn it back on one more time. That one LED's having the problem right there. That's what's doing the whole thing. Okay, so hopefully you can see the multimeter here. I have it in the diode scale and I'm just going to go over here and put the meter on a couple of these LEDs and you can see we get a normal forward LED voltage drop which is probably actually the reverse voltage but let me check the one that checked bad. I can get on to it. There we go. It is an absolute short. So let's go to ohms. I can keep the meter. Yeah, it reads 5 ohms. So that is definitely our problem right there. So I'm going to try to come up with a replacement LED so I can just change that one and hopefully that'll take care of it. 
So hopefully this is not the end of my video. Hopefully there will be a part two to this video, so keep watching. I'm going to try to locate a replacement LED. I do have some other LEDs that I pulled out of another scrap set, but as you can see, the physical size is much smaller. I don't know if their electrical characteristics are the same or not, so I'll have to do a little bit of research to determine that fact. So if this is truly the end of this video, thank you for watching. I uh, try to answer your uh, comments, your questions as much as I possibly can. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. You can follow me at NorCal715 on the Twitter. Once again, thank you very much. Hopefully there will be a part two to this. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.